Hello and welcome to ENC 2135, Research Genre and Context. My name is Trisha Rizza and I will be your instructor this semester along with my fabulous teaching assistant, Beauregard Bentley, better known as Bo or Bobo. Our goals for this particular video include the following. We want to be able to answer the question, what is the content for this course? How will I be assessed? What do I need to understand about the logistics of this course? And what are some tips for success in this course? So let's start with the content for this course. ENC 2135 is the required first year composition course at Florida State University. While continuing to stress the importance of critical reading, writing, and thinking skills students may have been exposed to in ENC 1101 or other writing course experiences, as well as the importance of using writing as a recursive process involving invention, drafting, collaboration, revision, rereading, and editing to clearly and effectively communicate ideas for specific purposes occasions, and audiences. ENC 2135 focuses on teaching students research skills that allow them to effectively incorporate outside sources in their writing and to compose in a variety of genres for specific contexts. The focus for our semester will be on what we're going to call discourse communities. And discourse communities emphasize that writing is a socially situated means of communication that requires adaptation across academic disciplines and, in fact, across various communities. Students take stock of the differences in writing situations, genres, and conventions by exploring the writing that gets done in their declared or prospective field of study. This means that our focus for the writing content will be centered around your particular major or field of study. Um, the major writing projects will each focus on that particular discourse community. Those writing conventions, genres, and rhetorical strategies used in your field, giving you the unique opportunity to explore your field of study from a writing and rhetorical perspective that will help you in your career at FSU, but even more importantly, beyond and in your desired field. So one of the things that we want to make sure that we understand is that when we enter a course, we want to understand our takeaways. And, and typically in academic spaces, we do this framed around what's called learning outcomes. Now these are listed in the syllabus um, and I'm not going to read them to you, but please make sure you take reference them because they really are kind of your goals for what you would like to take with you as a result of completing this particular course. So why writing? There's a larger discussion that we could get into here, but we're going to keep this fairly simple in that when we think about writing, uh, we think about it in terms of improving our critical thinking, improving our vocabulary. We know that writing is an essential communication skills. We know that it engages both sides of the brains. It helps us think through problems. The written word influences society. We're going to see this throughout our projects as you engage in different genres, but using your intended major. It clarifies your ideas for not only others, but also for you. And it is vital to developing yourself personally, academically, and professionally. We want to keep these things in mind as we walk through these different projects. We're going to continually reflect on what is it that we are walking away with? What is it that you are doing or how has these different experiences that we will have, how have they impacted your writing or composing process? We're also going to build this course through the idea of key terms. And the key terms offers us concepts and a shared vocabulary that are going to allow us to talk about writing and use these different terms in conjunction with the writing that you do for the course. One of the first words we're going to tackle 
in this first project is the concept of discourse communities. We're also going to get into rhetorical situation, audience, purpose, context, genre strategies, mode, medium, and arrangement throughout our semester. But having key terms and building our course key terms just allows us to have a shared language as we walk through the different aspects of our course. When we think about navigating our course content, this course is conducted completely online. That means that the content and assignments are all submitted online. Your content is going to be in the form of video and text content, uh, discussion boards. Uh, we will have face-to-face -face via Zoom instructor-student conferences. You'll also have opportunities to work one with someone in the course or with a small group in the course through different collaborative projects and peer review. We also engage in reflection after and during our larger writing projects. So let's take a look at how you're going to be assessed in this particular course. So we have essentially five assignment types. What you'll notice is that we've got four projects and then something called learning activities. Learning activities are the smaller pieces. They're scaffolded pieces that help us to build towards the larger final product that is project one, project two, project three, project four. So if we go back to the description of our course and some of the objectives, it is understanding that writing is socially constructive recursive process. And as such, we're going to use that definition to help us build to the larger projects through the smaller pieces. And once we get rolling, you'll see what I mean by that. You'll also see the grade distribution. Now, each of these, all of this is, is also contained in the syllabus. Um, we're going to briefly describe, or I'm going to briefly describe each of the four projects, but please know we dive right into project one uh, during week one. Um, each of the other projects we will dive into very specifically as we get into them. So just as a brief overview, the first project, which is the first one we're going to dive into, called Investigative Field Essay, is going to ask you to explore the discourse or the language of your declared or prospective academic major so you can begin to engage in the discourse community of whichever your chosen field of study is. You're going to then choose a contemporary or identify a contemporary topic or issue within that field of study and investigate it. That means research. Uh, you're going to form a research question that will serve as the cornerstone of your investigative essay. In other words, you'll develop a research question that you will then research the culmination of that research, that analysis of the research will allow you or help you to establish your argument or your thesis for the essay. In order to explore your research questions, you're going to practice and review and engage with different types of research, be it primary research, meaning that it was data collected through interviews or firsthand observation. Um, many of you will probably lean more on secondary research, which means you're going to be looking at things like scholarly resources, popular resources, or professional publications. Um, the sources of data will serve as the basis for your investigative uh, essay. Project two is a rhetorical analysis of field arguments. So within your field, there are specific things that are published or used. So this particular assignment is going to ask you to analyze two artifacts from your field of study. One will be a text-based artifact. That could be a scholarly article within your field, a book chapter, a professional publication, and one will be a non-text-based. This means that it could be an image, a video, or a podcast. But we're not going to analyze the content. You're going to be considering how each of those artifacts functions in a rhetorical manner. In other words, you're going to be looking at how each artifact constructs meaning and fits a particular rhetorical situation. By comparing and contrasting these two artifacts, you're 
you're going to be able to describe how each satisfies its genre conventions and accomplishes particular rhetorical purposes, all through the lens of your particular field of study. So if we think of it in terms of building in the first project, you are really building or beginning to understand an issue within your discourse community uh, or your field of study. The second one's gonna ask you to continue that conversation through the analyzation of two artifacts within your field or within that discourse community. The third one is called a multi-genre persuasive campaign. And this is going to um, ask you to investigate a current issue or a debate that is taking place within your field and to take a stance on the matter. Um, based on your field research and analysis, you're going to compose three new genres, compositions to move audiences to action. Um, it also includes a rhetorical rationale that, that's going to ask you to reflect on the choices that you made uh, in composing for each genre. Um, so what it's going to ask you to do is take the research that we did for that first one and take a stance and then represent it in different genres outside of the textual analysis uh, essay piece. Your final project is going to be a project is going to be an e-portfolio or electronic por portfolio. Um, and Typically, this is a collection of student authored texts that showcase uh, your, your learning across time or showcases your best work. Um, a, a portfolio, a writing portfolio, is created by collecting, selecting, and reflecting on writing that is completed at the end of a given period of time, a unit, a course, a program, or even a career. Um, in this class, you're going to create an e portfolio that includes a globally revised version of one of the major writing projects. Uh, supporting documents, reflecting your particular composing practices and writing skills, as well as a reflective statement that articulates what you've learned about writing uh, by completing the major projects in this course. This will be our final piece. Uh, this will be done through an open access web design platform uh, such as Wix or Weebly, and we'll talk about that as we get closer. By the time we get to this fourth project, it's really looking at the projects that you've done, and you're going to showcase one of those um, into that portfolio and then reflect on it. When we think about the learning activities, those are those weekly assignments that help us to build to the larger projects. Um, these are going to be things like uh, different writing workshops that we'll do uh, through the online platform, peer review, one-on-one -on -one conferencing with me, again, all of these things to build towards the larger project. So let's talk about the logistics of the course. Once you are logged into Canvas, you will, you will first encounter our homepage. And the homepage you'll notice is quite long, and I apologize for that, but the homepage is to help guide some of the major pieces and parts of our of our course. You'll notice that there is an introduction. Um, you'll also notice that it'll have the uh, course overview, which includes my name, my email, my office hours, how you can access my office. You'll notice that you've got several things on the navigation bar that you can use um, throughout the semester. There are a couple of things I would like for you to make note of. One is the home page at the bottom is where you find our calendar that will give you specifically what week it is, what the dates are, what the assignments are, and which module it's in. Our course is organized through modules. And so when you are looking for anything that has to do with the content of our course, you will go to the modules. And we're going to look at that in just a second. For access to the syllabus, to download it or print it or uh, frame it, just kidding, um, you'll notice that there is a syllabus uh, button on our navigation menu in Canvas. So if you click on that, you'll be able to access the syllabus. Uh, much of it is what we are talking about right now but I will ask you to engage with the syllabus a little bit more specifically um, for an assignment that you'll do for this week. So let's talk about our online course for just a second. 
The course, the content for this course is delivered completely online using a variety of modes. This includes text, images, video, audio, as well as links to other, other sources. Um, all assignments are digitally completed and submitted. I do not take any emailed assignments. Everything has to go through Canvas. The course includes a variety of opportunities to grow as a writer and better understand your writing and composing process. In order to become a better writer, we must write. Therefore, we will embark upon a semester long, and in our case, a very short semester, six weeks, writing journey that, uh, that you can engage with different genres, compose for a variety of rhetorical situations, understand the conventions of different discourse communities, and begin to visualize your writing process beyond the classroom. It is vital to actively engage with all parts of our course in order to ensure the most effective learning experience. This course is not a self-paced course. By 8 a.m. every Monday, a new module is published. The module will include the week's content and assignments. The modules are arranged using page numbers to help guide you. And as you can see right here, this is an image of our first module. And I want to point out a couple of things. You'll notice that they are arranged by page numbers. You'll also notice that um, some of the page numbers have due dates behind them and some of them do not. Those that do not have any due date behind them or under them are what are called content pages. That means that they include vital content that you need um, to engage in prior to moving to the next page. So for example, you might see that page two is an assignment and there's a due date but we don't want to go straight to page two because you will have missed the content that's on page one that might help to explain or support what I'm asking you to do on page two. So when you get into each week, you're just going to follow it like you would almost a digital book. Each page will include the directions and what you're going to need to do. Now this first week, you'll notice we have a big week and the due dates are scattered out. For example, these first two do count for first day attendance. So you will need to complete them in order to be counted as present um, for this semester. You'll notice that we have a due date on Tuesday, a due date on Wednesday, one on Friday, and then one on the 28th of uh, that Monday, okay? I will say that this module represents, by the time you finish this module, you will be in a position to begin drafting your investigative essay, field essay. What that means is that the time involved in understanding um, what the process is with regards to that field essay, you'll want to make sure that you look at what I'm asking you to do with each of these assignments to make sure that you build in a really good project management or time schedule for yourself. So as far as required textbooks, this particular box that you see on the screen is included on our home page. There are two required texts for this particular course. One is called the Bedford Book of Genres and one is called a Writer's Resource. Now you can access both of them through the FSU bookstore or the Follett bookstore. On our homepage, what you'll notice is there is a PDF Follett access guide. This is just a quick tutorial. It's just a, it's just a PDF that you can use to help you with accessing um, or what you need to do once you click on the link. This is, will be the link to the bookstore, so you will click on it and follow those directions. Once you've purchased, especially the, the Bedford Book of Genres, there is a tutorial, it's a video tutorial that'll help you in navigating your, um, your book, the Bedford Book of Genres, which will be digital. Now, I will, I will tell you that the, our primary book will be the Bedford Book of Genres. Um, we will reference a writer's resource um, throughout but this will be the primary one. There are also, or there will also be included PDFs along the way. Obviously those are nothing you need to purchase. They'll just be included in the course content. 
Again, this is on our homepage of Canvas. So let's just talk a little bit about some of the um, policies for our course. Um, when you're using email to contact me, please use your, e your e FSU email account. This will also be the account that I will use to contact you. You're going to want to make sure that you're checking your FSU email as well as Canvas regularly for course and college related correspondence. Um, it is your responsibility to check both your email and Canvas to ensure that you're up to date on all information pertinent to our course. Now, we are online, however, um, we can also communicate through our Zoom uh, conferences in my virtual office and phone conferences. You'll notice all of that information on how to access that and what to do is on our homepage of Canvas. My email policy um, so that I can make sure that I stay organized uh, throughout the semester, depending on when it is, my email box gets fairly full. So I wanna make sure that I'm organizing and able to respond back in a timely manner. So when you're emailing me, please include your first and last name along with the course name and the subject line. Um, in your correspondence, please include the necessary context so I can easily reference it. Um, I receive lots and lots of emails on a daily basis and I may not remember our conversation or specific questions you had regarding a situation. So just make sure you provide that conversation so I can accurately um, and effectively respond. I do work very hard to provide a response within 24 hours. Um, in most cases, it does not take me that long, but please allow me that 24 hours before you send me a reminder email. With that said, there may come a time when you have not heard from me in that 24 hour window, and I would greatly appreciate a reminder. I do check email throughout the day, Monday through Friday from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Email on the weekends is checked with less, much less frequency as I try to take a little tech break. This does not mean that you can't email me on the weekends. It just means that you will likely not get a response until that Monday. Our attendance policy is pretty simple. You enrolled in the course. I need you to, to be in class. For online courses, it, just, it means that you are participating and completing our weekly online content and assignments during the weeks um, and the due dates when they are assigned. Attendance and participation are two of the most significant factors that promote student success. This is borne out in so many different statistics. Um, students are, you are, responsible for completing all of the work assigned. With that said, I'm here to foster and support your success. As such, communication is very important. Please feel free to discuss with me any circumstances that may lead, may lead to online absences so that together we can develop the most positive and effective plan for success. As far as late or missed assignments, um, my guidelines are as such. You want to complete or submit all assignments on time according to their guidelines and directions. With that said, I understand that things happen. So if you have a reasonable need for an extension, um, please communicate that with me as soon as possible. This does not mean um, the, the second it's due. Uh, the earlier that I know, the more that I can help. Please also keep in mind, this is a very short semester. We keep moving regardless. I am happy to provide an extension, but you have to understand that that extension means that you are going to be completing that work and keeping up with whatever new is coming your way. So please, please just be discerning when you are thinking about or feeling like you need an extension on something. Communication is key. You are responsible for acquiring and completing all missed work and content, which is housed in our Canvas course. We can also use each other. Uh, so we will have a lot of discussion boards along the way. Um, and so you will be meeting other people in our course. Feel free to reach out to them um, to help you with anything missed as well. Students are responsible for keeping up with the assignment due dates. Assignments submitted after the de deadline will be penalized 10 points for each day late, including weekends. Um, the extension of deadlines in the case of extreme circumstances will be determined at the instructor's discretion, as I mentioned earlier. I do have a final draft policy, um, and that means that if you submit a final draft for any of the projects and they don't meet the minimum assignment requirements, um, in a lot of cases this means word counts, you will receive an automatic zero. You're responsible for returning the draft to me with the corrections as soon as possible. 
uh, please remember that for each day there is a 10 point deduction from the final draft of that for that project. That is a typo. Um, we're going to talk a lot about academic honesty and plagiarism. So I'm just going to reference this real quick. Uh, this is also in the syllabus, um, but I just want to make, uh, make reference to it now with regards to um, when, when I'm speaking about academic honesty and plagiarism, first and foremost, just don't do it. Um, most of the time I've encountered uh, the situations where it's not, a, it's not so much a matter of plagiarism as in just incorrect citation. Those are things that we can help each other with, I can help you with, um, so that you can avoid plagiarism. Um, however, uh, if there are cases of um, academic dishonesty, I do follow the college's established procedure for academic dishonesty, um, which includes the following. Notify you that you've received a zero or F for the assignment. Um, complete the form for academic dishonesty sanctions, which is placed in your disciplinary file. The penalty for the first offense of academic dishonesty is an F on the assignment, which could result in an F for the course. The penalty for the second or subsequent charge um, involves may include anything from conduct probation, suspension, dismissal, or expulsion. I have never had to use that. Um, <clears throat> however, those guidelines are set for us. Um, we have a civility clause. I, I call it the human clause. Basically, it says this, the course is built upon respect. As such, we'll engage with each other through the lens of being human. This does not mean that we all have to agree on everything. In fact, we will have much more productive and effective discourse when we engage in healthy but respectful debate in a rhetorically appropriate manner. Sexist, racist, homophobic, or anti-ethnic slurs, bigotry, and or disparaging commentary of any form, written or spoken, will not be tolerated. So let's talk about some tips for success in this course. There's really just three things. One, be present. That means that you are um, understand our online learning practices and expectations. Um, ask for help. Use the resources available to you. Identify your learning objectives and goals. Understand or set some foundations for what is it you want to do in this course and then engage engage in the content engage in the process the more that you engage the more you will walk away with which is the point number two take responsibility for your learning um, and what this means is that you realize that while i foster or facilitate an environment environment where learning can take place, it is up to you to engage in order for that the, the learning loop to, to, to be fully realized. Um, you want to make sure that you have the technology that you need. Um, it's always helpful to have a dedicated study or learning space. Along with that, um, build a plan uh, and stick with it. It is a rigorous course. It is a short course. There is a lot so it's going to, until you get into um, a rhythm, it may feel a bit overwhelming. Just take it one day at a time. Make sure that you take a look at the assignments and what's being asked of you. Reach out for help and use the resources available to you. I realize this is on there twice, but it's that important. Reach out for help. Third one is choose to succeed. We all have a choice. Things get stressful, things get crazy, I understand that. I'm here to help you through that, but I need you to make the choice to succeed so I can help you foster that environment. And I'll we'll close with this, like writing success is a pro process. What people see is the result of that process. And I usually use this, this kind of iceberg metaphor as realizing that when we go from ideation to publication in each of our projects, by the time you get to that publication, you see the result of all of the hard work um, and the process that happens um, under the water that nobody can see. What do we see? What do people see? What does your audience see? Your audience sees that final product. But realizing that it's everything that happens below the surface is the most important part because if that if that process below the surface is strong, then the product above the surface will be as well. 
I want to thank you uh, for stopping by and putting up with my introduction. I hope this helped answer a few of the questions regarding the course. Um, you can head back to Canvas where you can continue to walk through the, the home page just as a reference point, take a look at the calendar, and then move on over to the module to complete our week one. Have an awesome day and I will be in touch soon.